All right, FAQ number 109. Why did it take Jesus two times to heal a blind man in Mark chapter 8? Let's look at the scripture. Mark chapter 8, verse 22, begin there. It says, And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. Remember that. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up, and he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell it to any in the town. Now, there's, I'm sure there's a deeper meaning to that, and this is an interesting question, and you know, it's one of them things that you look at, and weird things that happen like that in the Bible, the Lord's trying to illustrate a point. He's trying to teach something through that story. That's why that story is recorded. Um, what's going on there? Again, you know, you look at that and you go, I don't really understand. Why couldn't he just say be healed? He did that with the guy in uh, the book of John. Is it, uh, I think chapter, let me just look here quick. Just so I get the, the scripture reference correct. Um, John chapter 9. Yeah, Jesus passed by, verse 1. He saw a man which was born, or which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Um, you know, verse 6, jump down there. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and he said, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore and washed and came seeing. So, the one guy, Jesus spits on his eyes and then puts the clay on and it takes both those things. The other guy, Jesus spits in the clay, puts it on there. It's like he kind of skips the thing of saying, oh, I'll just spit on your eyes and then, you know, try to do the clay afterwards. And the second time, it's like he does the clay and the spit together and says, okay, go wash. And he comes back and he says, I see fine. Uh, what's the Lord trying to illustrate there? Well, there's something there. Uh, what is it? I don't know. Uh, again, you know, what do you do with stuff like this? Do you just simply say, well, I don't understand it the first time I see it, so it's, I'm just going to cross it off? Or do you say, hmm, Lord, I'd really like to understand that better. You know, I've, I've done that thing so many times uh, in my life as a Christian and being in ministry. Uh, there's things in the Bible, I read it, and it's just like, that does not make a bit of sense to me. And, you know, sometimes the thought has entered my mind, well, then it, maybe it's an error. Maybe the King James Bible is an error. And it's like, no, it's not an error. It can't be an error. The errors are up here in this puny little brain of mine. I mean, we're dealing with an infinite God, you know, who writes to us through the pages of this book. And I just kind of let it go. And sometimes it'll be years later, and all of a sudden I'm back in that same passage, and the Lord will say, now look at this. And I look at that passage, and I go, that's what it means. Well, that makes perfect sense now. Why didn't I understand it way back when? Well, because there were some things that had to happen in my life before I could understand it, you see. But you see... Another thing there, John chapter 9, you have Jesus saying, I'm going to do this thing that God can be glorified through it. But here in Mark chapter 8, he's saying, he takes the guy by the hand and leads him out of the town, gets away from all the people, and he's like, okay, now I'm going to heal you. Heals the guy, and he says, don't go back into the town, and don't tell anybody about this. You know, could it be that the Lord was saying, I want the blind man in John chapter 9, I'm going to have him go in there and tell these this city because there's a lot of righteous people in this city and they'll glorify God as a result. But this city where the blind man in Mark chapter 8, this town that he was from, maybe the Lord wanted judgment to come to that place and was simply saying, I don't want them to hear about this stuff because they've already rejected me. They've already rejected you know God and they're just atheistic people living in there. So don't bother showing them any miracles. That could be another explanation for this thing. Uh, you know, maybe that was the case. I don't know. 
Uh, again, you know, I, uh, I'm not, we're not supposed to understand everything about God. We're just supposed to trust Him. So that would be how I would answer that question.